Hello everybody, this is again the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. Today we are going to talk about code generation for your vehicle controls. Um, I've again invited an expert to the session. Hi Tobias. Hi Christoph. Can Hi. you say some words about yourself? Sure. I'm cool. Tobias from the MathWorks Application Engineering team here seated in Munich. And I mainly work in the field of production code generation okay. and rapid simulation and testing. Okay, seems that this guy has some knowledge that is valuable for you. Um, what we are going to cover today is basically this. Uh, we will introduce to the MathWorks tool chain for code generation. I think it's pretty straightforward, but there are some details that are very interesting for you. We will guide you through supported platforms, platforms that we support directly with a hardware support package, or there are also other ways. And in the latter, Tobias will give you a demo and show you how you actually can can get your hardware into your or can get control systems connected to your hardware okay i think this is the the stage where i hand over to you tobias yes um thank you very much for that christoph so let's have a look at the mathworks code generation tool chain and to do so let's start at the beginning and the beginning is always matlab um, not everybody knows, but the origin of MATLAB is actually control design. Mm -hmm. So let's um, consider you have your controller designed with MATLAB mm -hmm. and you want to, to generate C code based on this pure MATLAB script. Okay. So you use the MATLAB coder, you use mm -hmm. the embedded coder, and then you can generate C, C++ code mm -hmm. from this MATLAB script. And this code can be used for, for example, desktop projects. Mm -hmm or as well for microcontroller applications, like considering okay. if you have an ARM Cortex-M4 or mm -hmm. something similar, or a TI or a Freescale processor, you okay. can take this code, integrate it into your project in the IDE, mm -hmm. compile it, and it will run on okay. the hardware. This is somehow new to me. I always thought that the coder products are related to Simulink and control systems, yes. but this is a very interesting information. So most of you will have MATLAB code. Yes. And that can be transferred. Yeah. And many people connect MATLAB with data analysis exactly. and statistics and stuff like that. But origin of MATLAB is really control mm -hmm. design. And with embedded coder, you have this capability. Okay. So let's uh, do the next step. And that's what you said, Simulink and state flow. Um, as well, at this stage, there's the way to connect to real hardware. Mm -hmm. At this point, it is uh, low-cost hardware with okay. support packages. You don't need any coder products here. Mm -hmm. It's just MATLAB, Simulink, and state flow. Mm -hmm. And then you can connect uh, from Simulink to targets like uh, the Arduino or the Raspberry Pi. Okay. That's part of our hardware support packages. Okay, and uh, what actually is a hardware support package? How can I, how can I get it? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, there's a button in uh, MATLAB, in okay. a MATLAB desktop. Okay. You click on uh, Get Target Hardware Support Package. Yep. It's because you click, you can install it from the internet. Okay. It gives you a selection of all available okay. support packages based okay. on your um, installation or of the licenses okay. you have installed. And it's not only Arduino, Raspberry Pi, um, we support a bunch of yes. also industry relevant hardware. Yeah. Um, like Texas Instruments, National Instruments. I think there are some, some, some hardware parts yeah, around. That's a good point. Um, at this stage, Simulink state flow, mm -hmm. it's really from the Simulink perspective, it's Arduino, Raspberry Pi. Okay. And then there are some hardware support packages for a data acquisition toolbox mm -hmm. and so on. What you meant, TI and ST microelectronics okay. or ARM processors, that functionality comes then with embedded coder. Okay. But, good point. Let's see. <laughs> Let's proceed here. Okay. <laughs> now, if you have MATLAB Simulink and Stateflow, you need MATLAB coder and Simulink coder. Um, this functionality enables you to do real-time simulation and testing mm -hmm. with, for example, Simulink real-time. Now, real-time simulation and testing is a rather generic mm -hmm. word or uh, yeah, sentence. <laughs> um, what does it mean? It means, for example, rapid controls prototyping. Exactly, yeah. If you have your controller designed in Simulink, you go to performant hardware like Simulink, uh, for example, SpeedGo target mm -hmm. hardware, which can be used with Simulink real-time as a okay. software license, mm -hmm. and it enables you to click a button in Simulink and test your system or your control design okay. on a real, uh, real-time hardware system. Okay. I think we will see some of that also in your demo. Uh, real-time simulation testing, not today, okay. perhaps in the next session. Okay, yeah. uh, today, I'll, in the demo, I, I will really focus on hardware targets mm -hmm. and the generic um, code generation okay, approach cool. because I think that's really um, for racing teams. Mm -hmm. I mean, on, on, the, on board, you have... Uh, you need a small form factor, which mainly means, I guess, that you have uh, really a small platine okay. where you need to run your code on. Okay, right. And the speed goat box is usually 
bit bigger. A bit, yes. Yeah. They have small okay. form factors, but okay. Yeah, but okay. I think it's really worth in the next session, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah. Uh, let us know. Um, you're aware of that? Formula student at mathworks.com. Should we do something on that? Please go ahead. So now we got simulink coder for mm -hmm. real time simulation and testing, meaning mm -hmm. rapid prototyping code. Yep. Now let's go to the embedded code generation. Here okay. we see two different approaches. Mm -hmm. We have again the hardware support packages, mm -hmm. but that's now really automated tool chains which mm -hmm. enable you to connect from Simulink directly to a certain target. Okay. For example, here it's the ST Microelectronics 32F4 mm -hmm. discovery board, mm -hmm. which has an ARM Cortex M4 processor um, integrated. Mm -hmm. And the idea is here. You can click a button in Simulink, the run button, and mm -hmm. it will automatically download the generate, uh, automatically generate C code, okay. optimize it for this target, download it, download it on the platform, the target, yeah. and it will be run on the, okay. on the uh, production hardware itself. Okay. So the toolchain is completely automatic. You okay. don't have to care about anything else. Okay. That's cool. I think that's exactly what, what somebody wants. Um, well, in order to avoid problems. You, yeah. you don't really care about the code generation because yes. that's done by the embedded coder yeah. and you directly can use it. Exactly. Okay. And you don't have to care about IDE and, and stuff like that because exactly. it's all automated. Yeah. Um, the generic approach is to use embedded coder and mm -hmm. uh, generate C, C++ code mm -hmm. um, for a certain target. Mm -hmm. That's something you can specify in the configuration parameters, mm -hmm. but it's really embedded coder generates ANSI ISO C code, okay. which is platform independent. Okay. Um, you can achieve a certain mm -hmm. hardware adaption okay. with this configuration platform. And then you take the generated code and integrate it into your C project in the IDE and use then the target specific compiler. Okay. And that yeah. really addresses, sorry, mm -hmm. that really addresses every microcontroller platform okay. capable for C, C++. Mm -hmm. This was uh, what I was about to say. Um, I, in Formula Student Germany in Hockenheim, I've seen some teams doing that. They have even manufactured their own microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. And used embedded coder, well, to get their code onto that, onto that, onto that hardware. Yeah, that's really what, and, and that's really what industry is doing. Like, mm -hmm. the hardware support packages with embedded coder, that's a really good thing for, let's say, production near rapid mm -hmm. prototyping purposes or process and loop simulations mm -hmm. to, to do equivalence testing from model to hardware mm -hmm. to verify if uh, the generated code on the hardware it's really doing the same as the model that you simulated before, mm -hmm. but for production purposes, then it's really this generic approach okay. because everybody has a certain processor. At that Different point. hardware. Yes, so, exactly. Good. Now, uh, I suggest to go ahead. Oh, there's some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we had a look at this plain C code generation tool okay. chain before. Now, at methods or tools are capable of a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we show here. You can, from Simulink and Stateflow as well, generate uh, VHDL or Verilog for mm -hmm. FPGAs or ASICs. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you would need uh, to use HDL coder. HDL. Mm -hmm. And then, but that's more for automation purposes, um, we have PLC coder, which okay. lets you use, generate structured text um, for PLCs. Mm -hmm. But I see, and I think in the, in the field of like racing teams, mm -hmm. Formula Student, I personally would say that C, C++ is yeah. the main, mainly used there. Uh, but here again, if you see a certain need um, that we introduce you to the HDL or PLC coder topics, yeah. feel free to let us know. Uh, I think mm -hmm. we have plenty of material around. We are cool. happy to answer <laughs> questions in this direction. Exactly. Cool. Um, well, I think now we promised you to, to talk a bit about supported platforms. Yeah. Um, depending on your hardware, you can use... Uh, certain certain ways to get the code yeah. onto that. Uh, let's put it this way. Like the mm -hmm. key message of embedded code is it generates ANSI ISO C code, okay. which is uh, per se platform independent. Mm -hmm. um, sure, for deployment, you need to adapt it to certain platforms. The okay. bit yeah. length and so on have to fit. That's okay. something you can configure with embedded code, mm -hmm. but still um, the C code can be used everywhere on every okay. platform, desktop, microcontroller, mm -hmm. wherever. It just needs to... Uh, be able to be uh, programmed with C okay. and C++. Mm -hmm. That's a generic approach, mainly used in the industry. Okay. Then we talked about Simulink hardware support packages. There are automated tool chains for, uh, to connect from Simulink mm -hmm. to microcontrollers. 
There are two MathWorks targets dedicated okay. for that. That's the STM thirty two F four discovery board okay. from Micro. Uh, f- uh, the board is manufactured by mm-hmm. ST Microelectronics. Mm-hmm. That's where we will see something in your exactly, mm-hmm. uh, exactly, and it has an ARM Cortex M four okay. on it. And then there's the Texas Instruments C two thousand C six C six thousand target, okay. and there's again an automated tool chain which is really provided by us. Okay, but there are more. Automated tool chains from okay. different manu- uh, controller or microcontroller manufacturers. Exactly. What we see here, um, we have picked two examples that I've seen at from the student events in Silverstone uh, or Hockenheim. I think these are is hardware that you are well, commonly using, but uh, we support more platforms. You will see it in the hardware um, support section. I will put a link at the end of the session. And then what you have been uh, starting to talk about is the, probably the MathWorks partner program. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have a really huge partner program, mm-hmm. which um, addresses mainly all or a huge variety mm-hmm. of different applications. Uh, mentioned before, SpeedGoat, for example. Mm-hmm. SpeedGoat uh, manufactures, builds, designs hardware that mm-hmm. can be used with Simulink real-time okay. for rapid control prototyping mm-hmm. purposes. Then, for example, the Gigabox Pro from Gigatronic. Okay. Um, this is really a application-specific rapid mm-hmm. prototyping platform from what I saw on their web page. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, you put all the examples in there. There are many different mm-hmm. other uh, partners or companies mm-hmm. who provide dedicated uh, prototyping platforms for certain applications. Exactly, which can be uh, programmed using Simulink. Of course, um, that's the idea. That's the idea. <laughs> cool. Using the secret um, generation tool chain exactly. and uh, just make it happen because you don't want to care about hardware at this point. Exactly. Uh, from from your student uh, point of view, you want to design your algorithm exactly. and test it or deploy it. You don't want to care about yeah. hardware. You just it has to work. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's also the feedback I got from you. Um, you don't want to have problems during code generation. No. I think the the problems of designing and testing a race car are big enough. <laughs> so keep it simple in that part. Exactly. Cool. I think. Tobias, now it's time to go to your demo. So first you will um, show us a dynamic simulation of, uh, well, a controller in the plant. Yeah. And then make a process in the loop simulation on this STM32 F4 Uh, discovery board. uh, Actually, I decided um, to put a bit more inside. Okay, Um, cool. I will will show three different things. Mm -hmm. First, the start, that's Mm -hmm. a dynamic simulation of controller and plant. Then I'll show the generic code generation approach, mm-hmm. just what is necessary and how the okay. code looks like. And then at, uh, at last, I'll show the STM32 F4 discovery board with a process in a loop uh, simulation. So Great. those three, three parts I want to cover. Perfect. Stage is yours. So let's start with a simulation of a system. Here is a rather simple example of a system. On the left hand side, we have, we have the system inputs, which basically is the set value. Then here we have the control model the plant that is controlled with the controller here, and then the system analysis, which basically is a scope, which has attached some signals we are interested in to monitor. Once here, this is the set value we want to monitor and the output of the system. This is put together and shown in the upper graph. And here in the lower graph, we monitor the status of the controller. Now to simulate, we simply push the screen button here in Simulink. And what happens now is that Simulink or the, the simulation engine simulates 0.5 seconds of the system behavior of the modeled system. The results can be seen here in the scope. We see here now, as said, in yellow, the yellow line, is, which is the set value. And here with this blue line, we see the behavior of the system consisting of controller and the motor, which is the plant in this model. And then we see here the status signal output, which is uh, monitored as well. And we see that the jump from one to two exactly happens here at a bit over 0.05 seconds, which corresponds to 2000 revolutions per minute. So based on this simulation result, we can uh, draw some conclusions of our system. So here we see that there has there is some status monitoring functionality implemented that shows us if the system is below or over 2000 revolutions per minute. This is the step here. And then from the upper graph, we see that here is no remaining uh, error in the system. And from that, we can draw the conclusion 
that obviously at least a PI controller is used to control the plant. Now, this was part one, simulation of the model. Once this is done and the simulation results here match our expectations or, fit or match the requirements, now we go ahead and do some code generation because the idea in the end is to take this controller here, let's open it, the idea is to take this controller, generate ANSI ISO C code with embedded coder and deploy it on a target. And as I said, I don't want to show you in the first step the automated tool chain, but I want to show you the generic approach with embedded coder that can be used for any hardware platform. So as I said, this is the controller. Here is the PI controller part of this model. And this here in the lower part, this is the status um, monitoring implemented with state flow. We remember this here just outputs if we are below or over 2000 revolutions per minute. Now to generate code from this model, we need to do some settings in the configuration parameters, which can be opened by clicking on this button. Let's reduce this a bit so we can see everything. So we start with the solver. It has to be a fixed step discrete solver because it's C we want to generate. Then from the code generation pane, we have to select ERT.TLC as system target file. This selects embedded coder for production code generation and will give us this huge variety of different options on the left side. One really important thing here is select report and activate create code generation, re code generation report and activate this open report automatically. This will automatically open the code generation report after code generation and the report gives you some general information about the generated code and it helps you to navigate and understand the generated code. Now, as said, we want to deploy the generated code to target, so we need some sort of hardware implementation. Here, for this example, I selected ARM compatible and ARM Cortex compatible. But as you can see, here's a, a, a rather big list of different device vendors that can be selected. And if you, if you take a microcontroller that isn't represented here, you can use generic and uh, do the customization of the word length for yourself. But we stick to ARM compatible. So once this is done, we simply push this button here. And this will trigger the code generation process in the background. So embedded coder analyzes this model here and translates all the different blocks and the execution order into a ANSI ISO C code. Once this is done, as said, the code generation report opens and it gives us some basic information of what, it's not really basic, it gives us all information needed to understand what's happening. For instance, the code interface report. It shows us the prototypes for the initialize function and for the step function. Whereas the step function is the function that inhibits all the functionality in, uh, of the model. At this part, it's the state flow chart and the PI control portion, portion of the model. Additionally, it gives us timing information. Here we see that the function is called periodically every one millisecond. This means for the integration in a bigger project or in the IDE, you should really call this model with one millisecond because otherwise the results on your hardware later on may differ from the results in the simulation. And it gives us information about the imports and outports uh, with the block name and the code identifier. So here we see that for the imports, it's a structure with the different parts W and Y, which are, have the data type real T, which corresponds to a double. Now let's have a look at the step function. We can simply click on this hyperlink and directly jump into the C source code file to line 33, which represents the start of the step function. And here we see we have a local parameter RTB error. Uh, we have here the error, which is the difference from uh, input value, set value, oh, set value minus actual system value. This is the error. And then here at this portion, we write uh, the discrete time integrator um, plus the error amplified with 10, which represents KP to the output. And this is the generated code here for the state flow chart. As well, 
we can navigate to the generated.h file and we see the rtw types file.h which inhibits all the different type defs, for example, here in line 62, type def double real t. This really helps to integrate the generated C code into your project because it prevents uh, the uh, it prevents you from name clashes or double definitions of names or oh, data types. One last thing to, I want to show you. You see here those blue hyperlinks and the green ones. The blue hyperlinks in the code help you to navigate the code in the code generation report. So let's see what PI control CG code gen U means. Um, we see here, okay, this is a parameter of this type external inputs PI control CG.co. Now, how does this look like? How, do, how does the type definition look like? Well, we simply click on it, and now we see uh, the code that jump to the .h file. And we see here the type definition of the struct with the two fields of type real T, V, W, and Y. So the blue links, as I said, help you to navigate that generated code. But what's now with the screen links in the comments? We click them and you see it navigates us directly to the portion of the model that represents this stage in the code and the block will be highlighted as well. So we have a bi-directional linking from the model to the code and from the code to the, to the model to really understand what's happening. And with this knowledge, of course, this is just the first step in the direction of code generation. There's much, much more to discover, much, much more to customize and to adapt the generated code to your needs. But what I wanted to do, wanted, wanted to do here is to show you how things work basically and what's the first step in the area of embedded C code generation. And with this said, I want to show you my last example, which is the processor in a loop simulation. But first, let's clarify what a processor in a loop simulation means. To do so, I change here to PowerPoint to give you an overview of what's happening. Here we have two different parts on the left side, the Simulink model, and it, it's the same here as we used before for our system simulation. And on the right side, this is the SD Micro Electronics STM32 F4 Discovery Board, which, as I said, used here this little chip here, an ARM Cortex M4. Now, when you do a process and loop simulation, what happens is that in Simulink, you have the special block, the PIL block for process and a loop and you press the screen simulation button. What happens now is that before simulation, code is being generated off this model and it's being deployed on the real hardware and it's all automated. You don't have to care for anything else. You just have to install the hardware support package which are provided with embedded coder, then press this button and the rest will take care of itself. You don't have to worry about anything. Now for the simulation, what happens is that Simulink it calculates here the actual inputs, then transfers these inputs via, a, for example, serial interface or ST-Link from ST Microelectronics to the hardware. Now here, one step of this model is being calculated and the output data is being transferred back to Simulink and then the simulation takes place as normal. So offline simulation in Simulink. And then the same thing happens again. Calculation of the actual inputs transferring to the hardware one step is being calculated, outputs transferred back, and the simulation simulink goes on. Now, how does this look in MATLAB? This is what I want to show you as the last example. Therefore, I changed to this process in a loop example. As you can see, the same example as before. Again, we have the system analysis on the right side. We have our model with the system inputs, the control model with the special process in a loop block now, and the plant. Now what I'm do doing now is I push this button. In the background, code generation is being used to generate C code and the automated tool chain for, which needs to be used to build the C project for the ARM Cortex M4 is automatically triggered. And now the simulation runs really on the hardware. Again, here we see the actual status, here we see the set value, and this is the actual system behavior. And uh, keep an eye here, once we cross the 2000 RPM, we get the step here, 
it just happens here you see now you can ask why is this a bit slow this is due to the data transfer from simulink to the hardware this is here a serial communication is used and this is sort of slows down the whole process but it doesn't matter in this place because it's not meant to be a real-time simulation here the focus is really on performance analysis of the generated code on the hardware so you can use the onboard timers to measure the task execution time for each single step that's one reason you can do this you don't it's all implemented you just have to to set some checkboxes and you can do, use it for equivalence testing meaning you can compare now the process in a loop results with the offline simulation results from before you can uh, take the difference and then you should really see a zero line if that's not the case you really have to go search for the issue and do some hardware debugging but here for us that's exactly what we expected to happen we have the set value and we have the system behavior um, i only simulated here 0.1 second instead of 0.5 seconds it's just due to the time but you could simulate one second or 100 seconds as well it just depends on what you want to see and i simply wanted to show you what you have to do in order to perform a process in a loop simulation and i think from my perspective pill is a really powerful tool because you don't need any huge prototypes to do so you just need the stm32 f4 discovery board which is quite cheap and you can go ahead, do code generation, and test your generated code or your functionality even before you have the whole system available. And this makes development in the end really more safe. Okay, so Christoph, let's have a look at the key takeaways after okay. the demo. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's really three things mm -hmm. that are the most important things to remember. Mm -hmm. First, embedded coder is for ANSI ISO C code generation that can be adapted to mm -hmm. the hardware platform you, are intended, uh, you intend to use. Mm -hmm. Then there are many, many different hardware support mm -hmm. packages that supports you as a Formula student uh, guy in, during your work mm -hmm. on the car. Okay. And then there's the MathWorks Partner Program, which provides a huge variety of different okay. um, platforms which help you deal yeah. with different applications during the work. Exactly. And you have seen a lot of the examples that are supported in that context. Yeah. Good. Um, Tobias, thanks a lot. I think this was a really interesting uh, insight to the topic of code generation. I think this is a starting point. Code generation yes. is huge. Yeah. We, we have kicked it off. Um, and again, let us know what was interesting for you, what was missing. If you have some cool technical solution that you want to share, we are totally open to that. Um, again, thank you, Tobias. And this brings me again to the end of the session, um, summarizing all the resources for you. So we have the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. You will find further information, including the software offer on our MathWorks Formula Student Germany webpage. Um, don't hesitate to contact, contact us via mail, formulastudent at mathworks.com. And if you use our software in your work, we really would appreciate if you, well, mark MathWorks as a partner means um, we would really appreciate if you use your logo on your documentation, on your reports. Um, well, this brings me to the end. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.